I'm drinking as well. Miller Lite, everybody. Yes. No more Bud Light for me. After what they did? After what they did to us, the valuable consumers? God, I get so distracted whenever I think about Bud Light. When I think of that trans woman, I get so fucking hard. A lady with a dick? Finally, a gal you can trust. Finally, a woman who gets it. She understands the struggle, a hanging one. Oh yeah, God, have you seen these trans women? Oh yeah. You left a couple of incognito windows open, didn't you, brother? These trans women got the peak of sexy science behind them. No one's hornier than scientists. And now they got real girl dolls they can decorate with huge fucking dumpers. Just humongo asses and juicy tits. If you can't get hard for trans women, you are gay. That is on you. You are a homosexual. I wish my wife had a dick. I got one of these analog ladies. She's got her sweet little velvet mitten. Boring. Give me a meaty crank up front. I want something I can hold on to as I'm pounding away. I want to crawl into her like handicapped people get into a hotel bathroom, you know? Just... That's what it's like, that's it. It's just blowjobs and anal forever? So every day's my honeymoon? Give me all of that. I feel some pushback from this side of the room. <laughs> Think about it this way, fellas. You're banging your girlfriend and you know that the whole time, when you're done, you can finally play a competitive game of Madden. Don't get me started on trans men. Oh, I get to fuck my buddy and his pussy? You mean the perfect crime? You can leave your beanie on, brother. Oh, this is so much better than the first show last night. They didn't know what kind of buzzsaw they were walking into. <laughs> a lot of life alerts went off at that show. <laughs> you guys are young, you're active, you're virile. I like that. But that first show last night, God, I hope whatever bus takes them back to their fucking... Whatever sober living community they came from. I hope that vehicle rolls. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and I hope the windows are open. I don't want the smoke to take them. I hope the fire melts their bones. Not you guys. I love you guys. What a fucking relief. God damn. I know I started horny. Guess what? I, I like it. I don't know why I did jiggle the round like that, but... <laughs> Felt good. I am so fucking horny, guys. I am. I haven't seen my wife in five days. I cannot wait to see her on Monday, cut off her bra, say, release the pigs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, boys. Uh-huh. It is a spectacle when I get a hold of those things. She's great. She's sweet and funny and generous and kind and nice, but God, also just huge. <laughs> absolutely crippling pair on her. She cannot sleep on her back. She will drown. 
It would look like she was choked to death by a man without fingers. Just... <laughs> the ringless rapist strikes again. It's tough. He leaves no fingerprints. You can't track him. We like to engage in the sacred act of intercourse. <laughs> Our favorite place to do it, bed and breakfast. <laughs> you have not had sex until you fucked in a room where an old couple's son OD'd. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, this side of the room. <laughs> That's the business model, my bad. <laughs> Dakota had a pill problem, they've still got a mortgage. Go fuck in the race car bed. Try not to come on the corn poster. We haven't touched his room since we found his body, so get in there, don't worry. We won't be one floor below you just staring at the ceiling all night, don't worry. Oh, oh he's gonna need a coconut water, Gerald. Also, shout out to coconut water. I've always said water doesn't taste enough like cum. That's my big issue with water. I always say that, my wife says, quit saying that, stop. Coconut water figured it out. They nailed the taste of load with the viscosity of jizz. And they put it in one $8 can and I'm grateful. I am, I need it, I need it. I'm huge. I'm fucking really big. You're petite, I'm massive. Same species. Doesn't make any sense, because you're so little. I'm so much of a man. Is anyone in here bigger than me? Brutal. <laughs> to get it together. No one in Cincinnati is bigger than me. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know if you've ever been the largest mammal indigenous to a comedy club. <laughs> but it is lonely. I'm a man. I know I'm up here in my ivory castle. You know, thank God I got fucking five inches of clearance on you guys. <laughs> or else how would you see me? I know, but look, I can come down there. I'll come down in the fucking pig hollow. Look. <laughs> look at that. I'm a man. I bleed blood. I come jizz. Once I came blood. But that's what I get for being hard in a revolving door. <laughs> you don't like me this close. This sucks for you. I'm gonna go back up there so you feel safe again, all right? I'll return to my tower, that's good. Uh, I do, by the way, if you are thirsty later, I, I do lactate, all right? I, I, I can breastfeed, I can breastfeed anyone in here. It doesn't taste good. It tastes like horchata with a ramen seasoning packet in it. It's the shrimp flavor. How does that make it worse? As if I said it was the beef flavor, you'd be like, let me latch, uppy uppy. No. No, you would not. Uh, this is going so well. We were in Louisville on Wednesday. Yeah. I don't know what happened to that city, but... <laughs> we gotta finish the job. <laughs> we gotta go in there and just burn it to the ground, all right? What's going on with you? Is a funnier comedian texting you? What's happening? <laughs> you got Cat Williams on the horn? <laughs> aspect of Louisville. That horse track is fucking gas. It's very good. Uh, I kind of I experienced Paris syndrome. I really fell in love. 
I, we were there at sundown. We saw the fucking dying light hit the rafters. It was really transcendent. I have Churchill Down syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> You guys can have that joke. I can't take that anywhere else. That one's for you guys. All right, yeah, take it to work tomorrow. Meet the HR person. Just get your settlement check. Uh, God. I really can't do that joke ever again. That one, probably not going in the special. I like whoever's laughing over here like this. <laughs> Is that you, Beardo? All right. I can't tell if you mistimed your drugs or nailed it. <laughs> yeah. You're really squishing this fella. <laughs> He's wedged in there like a door stopper. glasses suck. I don't want to get political, but I don't recognize Israel or Palestine. <laughs> I think I need a new prescription. <laughs> that counts as a joke. That counts. You laugh, you can't take it back. That one counts. Huh? Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> That's actually my punch-up girl, Louise. She travels the country with me, and when I miss a punchline, she jumps on that grenade. I like Girl Scout cookies, obviously. All right? You got a favorite flavor, sir? Uh, nothing I can think of. <laughs> I did not think you were gonna be shy. <laughs> You're like a big, tough man. I ask you about cookies. Ah, I don't know. I don't... <laughs> come back to me. Come back to me. Come back. To me. <laughs> you got fucking coquettish, man. <laughs> oh wow. Any cookies, fine. Thin mints is the only wrong answer. All right. I will kick every ass in this room. I don't fucking care. Come through me. Thin mints are dog shit. You know why they taste that way? Because so many grandmas kept their dark chocolate cookies in the freezer next to their new ports. They're, they're fucked. They're bad. <laughs> I'm not over your reaction, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, man? Favorite Girl Scout cookie? I forget what it's called. <laughs> this is some of the worst crowd work ever. <laughs> Samoas, yes! Samoas! Samoas indeed, yes! Oh, Samoa! I love, I love Samoas, and I love doing that voice, and... Oh, I, Samoa's got that island flavor. I love Samoa's. I could eat a whole box of Samoa's. I could eat a case of Samoa's. But I could not finish one Samoan. <laughs> it's not a race thing, they're huge. It's a volume issue. I, I bet they taste great. Uh, okay, that's where I lost you. That's fine. <laughs> Fuck, I'm on thin ice. Thank God I'm not Samoan. <laughs> I was in control the whole time. You thought you caught the swine? No, no, I'm too greasy. I was diddled. I was diddled, yeah. Mostly at chain restaurants. I got got at a McDonald's play place. It didn't start as a ball pit. But it ended that way. <laughs> Little Caesars, fuck. Little Caesars, I was eight years old, I was adorable. I was hot, but I was not ready. 
and I don't want to talk about what happened at Subway. Let's just say they got the guy. You know who I'm talking about. Those were my pants. It was a sex trophy. <laughs> There's nothing funny about diddling. Except for the term diddling. <laughs> That's a very funny thing to call the worst crime you can commit. <laughs> diddling sounds like something a child would love. <laughs> you should hire a diddler for every kid's birthday party. Oh, Janet, how was Bobby's birthday? Great, we got the best diddler in the tri-state. <laughs> oh, yeah, he diddled every kid. Yeah. Not one face went undiddled. It was... Yeah, that one doesn't always work. <laughs> it's all right. Luckily, we have young people here. That's what I'm happy about. Young me, how old are you? 25. 25. I had pubes on 9 11. So think about that. You were smooth. You were pubeless and toothless. And I had a full rocking bush. Think about it. Think about my 13 year old body with a nasty thatch. I did not have pubes the morning of 9 11. But when Tower One went down, <laughs> <laughs> that was my body's fear response. And my dick was like the plane that hit the Pentagon. They never found it. <laughs> I have a dick now. I don't want to brag about it. Don't listen to the internet. I have a penis tucked away in these joggers somewhere. <laughs> yeah, joggers, yeah. AKA maternity pants for men. <laughs> Finally, all the style and comfort of a third trimester pregnancy without that pesky baby. I do have a dick and I don't want to come to Ohio and brag about my mountain hog, but five inches soft. Three inches hard. It bloats up like a toad's throat. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Now whenever I want to fuck my wife, I gotta say, hey baby, time to scare the toad. <laughs> and she gets dry. But I am undeterred. Cause frogs like the water. Toads like the dirt. I get in there, I kick up dust till I bust. I thrust because I must. I make my own mud. I told that joke in Japan, they hated it. They thought I was bragging. I did, I went, to, I went to Japan to do standing up comedy. Uh, I went to Tokyo to tell Jokyo. That counts as a joke. Just cause it rhymed doesn't devalue the humorous intent. I was over there, I did, some, I did some shows, but really I made a bunch of money in a different way. Uh, some businessmen got their hands on me and they climbed me like ants. Those little fellas, I was the eucalyptus tree and they were the koalas and they were just scurrying all over me, man. They call it the Tokyo big boy circuit. And those businessmen have curious fingers and furious toes. They dug in, I can't even shake them. Sometimes I find one in my chest hair, I pull them out. I put them in an envelope, I send them back home. I did the normal stuff. Tummy table, human bunk bed. Nothing crazy, you know? The best one that I would do for them, I would strip nude, lay on my back, fill my belly button with water, give them each a bath. <laughs> and 
I have a very deep belly button. It's 12 inches from crust to core. One time a woman took a body shot off me, she's dead. It was mercury poisoning from all the koi fish in my man pond. That's enough of that joke, all right. Tokyo's cool, man. It's the future in Japan right now. And not just because of the time change. <laughs> the doors are locked from the outside. <laughs> yeah, they got all types of weird technology over there. I used a talking toilet in Japan, and uh, I toot in it. I hit it with a nasty mound. And afterward, it said, thank you. <laughs> Which, it was a relief, honestly, because now we can be sure the robots have not achieved sentience yet. We have not hit the singularity. They do not have awareness. Because if that toilet had any self-respect whatsoever, it would not have thanked me for what I did to its mouth. It would have said, please kill me. Or, yum yum, so full. <laughs> it was a lot, I made a huge mess. It was bad. It wasn't even set to English, but that toilet knew. That toilet knew whatever but bestowed that bountiful blessing was not from the humble islands of Japan. That was an American ass. It was really bad. It was the third worst bomb an Americans dropped on Japan. Right, the issue with that joke is you can see it coming. Unlike the Japanese on that fateful day. is a great age, by the way. It's a good age. I got a brother, he's 28. It's pretty cool. Big difference, though, between uh, the younger people and me is that I was bullied relentlessly. Uh, my brother did not experience this fate. I say bullied. It was more just like low-key sexual assault. <laughs> it was a lot of like wrapping your dick around your wrist and asking a slow kid what time it is. <laughs> he can't read a regular clock. <laughs> Don't hit him with a dick clock. <laughs> Another cool one was you'd uh, take your ball bag, put it on top of your buddy's hat, you know? Like, I like, I like, I like your yarmulke, you know? That was, that was a good one. Uh, the worst one for sure was this game called Warm Up My Face. <laughs> you sound like you played that game. <laughs> That's the laugh of a victim. <laughs> I would ask you if you ever play, but I don't want you to have a seizure, sir, so. <laughs> I don't want your fucking brain to pop. <laughs> You're right to leave, I understand. <laughs> yeah, why about my face went like this? There was a bigger boy named Wyatt Mays, and he would come up to me in school and he'd be like, Sam, your face looks pretty cold. And I would say, who fucking told you that? <laughs> my face is an adequate temperature, Wyatt. And he would say, I don't know, man, looks pretty cold to me. And I would say, I will swear on any book you call holy. It is warm, Wyatt. And as I was begging and pleading, another kid named Anthony would kneel behind me and Wyatt would shove me over him. As I was laying on my back, Wyatt would pull his pants down and sit on my face. Oh yeah, he was quite cunning, this Wyatt. He was an improviser. And then he would say, I bet your face is warm now. And I would say, because I was wearing a boy as a mask. <laughs> so I suffered that. All right, but the young people, you guys had to deal with a whole different American calamity, which is the, uh, the deeply American problem of the school shooting. You had to live in fear of that. You know, just fucking go with me. <laughs> Chill, all right? I was bullied. You had to live in fear of the school shootings. Uh, you know, big difference. I will say this though, school shootings are a pretty effective means of bullying. It's pretty efficient, really. Wyatt only had one butt. Imagine if he had a gun that shot 15 butts a second. He could have warmed up a lot of faces. <laughs> See, it's a butt joke, everyone. 
Don't worry, it's okay. Uh, I never envied you guys. One time I envied your situation. Because in sixth grade, uh, I was on a field trip to the Denver Art Museum, and I was in the Gifted and Talented program, so I had to give a speech on a Picasso painting. And I had to like explain what the stars represented. And as I was up there boring my entire class, another kid came, Jesse came up behind me and pulled down my basketball shorts. <laughs> and I was 5'10", you know, fucking 220 pounds, 11 years old. <laughs> so it was adult body baby penis. <laughs> And this was pre-9-11, so there was no cloud cover. It was just full pig snout right there. As I was standing up there exposed to my entire class, I would have much rather been shot in the fucking head. That would have been a mercy killing. Because now I'm labeled, you know, adult body baby penis. That's all I am. Forever, I'm baby penis Sam. And even like if I'm shot later in a school shooting, they're not gonna remember me as friend to all Sam talent. They're gonna be like, oh, did you hear about Sam? No, what happened? Oh, he was shot in that school shooting. Oh. Wait, baby dick Sam? <laughs> oh, it's, it's too bad. Where was, where was he shot? <laughs> Definitely not the dick. <laughs> the shooter didn't have a scope on that thing. <laughs> he wasn't a sniper. So, yes, that's a difficult joke to tell. But hey, I'm from Colorado. We kind of invented it, so it's okay, all right? Uh, it's, 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 life is a gift, and I'm, don't laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, it's a crazy cool thing to have. I, I love being alive. My dad barebacked my mom. And then my dad bumped his stump till he grumped inside of my mother. And then 15 months later, I came screaming out of her. Oh yeah, I was in there way too long. I was like a hot pocket they left in the oven past its time. I ruined the sleeve. <laughs> I, was, I was a 12 pound baby. It was not a delicate procedure. Think of my poor mother squatting over that bale of hay in that abandoned barn. That after hours veterinarian counting his cash. My dad sitting on a barrel combing his ponytail thinking about disc golf. It was, it was not easy on my mom. I was in there. Way too long. I came out with two sets of teeth. <laughs> One was a necklace. It was fucked. And my mom gives me the gift of birth, you know? She brings me into this world, and the first thing I did to her was rip her from asshole to belly button. <laughs> so she's bummed, and dad is pissed. Because I ruined his favorite hole in mom. I hope. <laughs> I hope that was his favorite hole. I hope he wasn't butt-fucking my mom. <laughs> you don't butt-fuck the woman you love. That's what drifters are for. <laughs> she survived that somehow, but then she fucking, she died at 69, so, nice. <laughs> don't clap. <laughs> don't do that, yeah. It's never not funny. Nice, 69, yeah. I wish I could say she died 69-ing, but no. She, she died doing what she loved. Complaining of chest pain. It, so the issue is, is, I'm clearly a big fat guy. But I wanna live. I travel a lot and I see just like how healthy the world is. I go on stage in Europe and I gotta go up there and be like, look, I know I look like a propaganda drawing. <laughs> but we're, I'm not even that fat. They don't know the kind of fucking legless pigs we have over here. We got some mutants over here that they have no idea exist. In America, I'm aspirationally fat. People see me here and they stop their rascal scooters. Good God, to have that body. He's got his whole life ahead of him. 
He's gonna live to be 56. God, to look like him, I would give my other foot. Cause I see him, I see, I see the babes over there. I was in a cafe in Berlin and I was with another comedian and like, you know, I'm married, I'm monogamous. We're not poly, we're still trying. And <laughs> we haven't given up on each other, you know? <laughs> That's just spiteful. That's all that joke is. It doesn't come from a place of jealousy. Don't worry. I'm, I'm good with it. One hole forever. That's what I said in front of the judge and those were my vows. One hole forever. Your Honor. Your Honor, get off her. That counts. That counts as a joke. That's what you sound like. That's your version of laughter. She sounds like a fucking flaming skull. It's crazy, bro. That's what opiate withdrawal sound like. That's it. This is my demographic. This is my man right here. Yes. Bearded man, drinking booze, broken leg. That's what I... That's, yep. The doctor quit giving me the damn pills. Said I was too good at eating them, so here I am. <laughs> so I'm in Germany, I'm with this comic. And like 10 of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Just statuesque, blonde hair, blue eyes. They were... They look like what Hitler was fighting for. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. And that sounds bad, but it's a pretty high compliment. <laughs> when you see the Aryan ideal in real life, it really makes you think. <laughs> what side am I on? You know? How many people have to die so I can have cheekbones? <laughs> Six million. Women are lined up ordering, and the other comedian nudges me, and he points at the gals, and he goes, <laughs> Too bad you're married, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's all that's preventing that from happening. <laughs> Too bad I have this sacred trust with my wife, or else all of their holes would be in trouble. <laughs> no, there's no way. We could never, ever mate. Anything that comes out of me would be poisonous to them. If I were to bear back them raw, my seed would cause them to pass away. It would make their uteruses wilt and fall out like dried flowers from an old book. There's no way. There's no way they would let me in there. There's, it would have to be the end of the world. That's the only situation in which I'm allowed to gain access to their pussies. It's the only, don't fart noise that. I didn't want to say pussy either. What do you want me to say? Copulate? Ugh. It'd have to be like the end of the world. And we're in some bunker in old Sweden. And it's like the 10 girls and me and a woman scientist. I know. <laughs> We're clearly doomed, but... <laughs> Woman scientist, what's next? The dog wearing sunglasses? <laughs> so we're in this bunker, right? And like, the woman scientist is like, you, we must save the species. You must let Sam gush. Let... He's the only male man left. You must let him nut so we can save the species. They, before they allowed that to happen, they'd be like, are we sure all the chimps are dead? <laughs> Jesus. I know, man. All right. I want to get better. Okay. Here's the thing. My wife wants to have a kid. I don't. I do not want a child because I don't have much faith in how things are going. 
I think the, the tenuous tethers that keep America from devolving into chaos and bloodshed are very, very thin. And I think in about 20 years, it's just going to be fucking hellfire. And I don't want to bring a kid into that world. I don't want to bring a child into this world just so they can be used as a fleshlight and then food. <laughs> I do not want that. I don't want that. You guys are responding as if I said that's all I want in the world. That is the opposite of what I want. No, because my wife's beautiful and I'm a large breed mammal, so we're gonna have the human equivalent of corgis. The most edible and fuckable dog, yes. They are, they're just a big tube of meat with a giant ass that they swing around. And they swing it around and they look back at it and they let their tongue hang. They're the ultimate sex food, all right? Am I crazy? What's a more fuckable dog? No one ever wants to play this game. No one's ever said, easy brother, Greyhound, no. Greyhounds are all stuck up. There's not enough meat on them, you know? <laughs> yes, I have thought about it. Uh, so yeah, I don't want that. But like, I do like the idea of being alive to see it all just fall to ashes. And in order to do that, obviously, the Miller Lite's helping, you know? <laughs> Got some health food. But uh, I've been lifting weights. And it's not for the reason that you think. It's not what you assume. Because I'm worried that in 10 years, I'm going to get in a game of tug of war with a warlord over my wife's body. That's not what it is. I'm not worried that some man covered in pelts is going to have my wife by the head. And I'm gonna have her by the ankles and I wanna be strong enough to be able to rip her in half and keep the bottom. That's... That's not it, no. Yes, would I rather have the bottom? Duh. That's where the pussy at. <laughs> also, you can get a lot more resale value out of the bottom of a woman in the apocalypse. You can get a lot more bullets and salt. But that's not the reason, it's not what you thought. I wanna get strong because it's, it's pretty vain. I am tired of my arm shaking during missionary. This really kills the mood. Now whenever I go to mount my wife, there's just this flash of fear on her face. Ah, and that is, that is bad for the toad's morale. It's not good for the toad's ego. Because when we do missionary, she's effectively a hobo trying to stay warm beneath an old bridge. And she's worried the bridge is going to collapse because the pillars are weak. Missionary sucks anyway. Missionary's fucked. Where do you stand on missionary? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I channeled this man in that moment. <laughs> no, but I'm serious. What, do you enjoy missionary? It's okay, right? Now imagine I'm involved. Imagine it's me looming over you, just sweating into your open mouth. I get it, ladies. Sometimes you fucking work a long shift at the foundry or whatever, and then you don't want to clock out and then clock back in. I understand. But I think it's bad for the woman. I don't envy any woman who's had to do that with me. Had to's not the term. <laughs> Easy. I don't envy any woman who's willingly participated in missionary with me after a litany of yes or no questions. Because they have to look at me in my glazed pierogi face. Just looking up at me every 15 pumps, I scream, don't move, I'm close. I gotta look down at them. I gotta behold the, the, the splendor that is their rat tail and their eye patch. I gotta gaze upon the beauty of their monster energy throat tattoo. It's, and they have to just look up at me. I don't look good during sex. You guys know like old-timey maps when they'd have a drawing of the wind in the corner? 
You guys know what I'm talking about. You guys are all the wayward children of mariners, you know. You guys were conceived during a shipwreck, you understand. They'd have a drawing of the wind in the corner and that's how I look during sex. Just. <laughs> and then I come. I hit her with the toad venom. Oh great, now she hallucinates for 72 hours? It's bad, there's better ways. There's better ways to bring pleasure upon a lover. There's a new cool thing called the Standing 69. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? That's my impression of a comic bombing at a blind and deaf school. The Standing 69 is all the kids are talking about. Uh, hiccups? It's all right, brother. All right? I'm gonna give you something to scare you. Me on top of her. Just hammering away. I don't hear any more hiccups. You ever had the hiccups? Oh, what? What? Oh, what? Oh, oh, oh. That's you answering a question. That's... <laughs> the standing 69 is uh, it's a new move. And I gotta tell you, I tried it out. And I gotta tell you, turns out it's very hard to eat pussy upside down. <laughs> It's just my wife holding me by the ankles. She's very strong. She's Suge Knight, I'm Vanilla Ice. She wants her money. So she's got a toad load in her mouth and now I'm swaying upside down like a fruit bat. So I've been made a pendulum by gravity. And eating pussy's tough enough, but when you've got to time your attack on her south mouth, <laughs> you gotta make every lick count. <laughs> That's echolocation. The clit can't hide from a bat. You try and hide your clit from a bat, sister. Good luck. It's gonna peel that grape every time. That's not even the worst part. The worst part is when she comes, because she's gonna come, or I'm going to die upside down. Because when she comes, her knees buckle and she hits me with the tombstone. Yeah, you should have probably been removed a while ago, but not here at Go Bananas. Not here at Cincinnati's home for live comedy. <laughs> I have to say stuff. Sorry, you could stay. You're doing good. Why? Ow. Oh. Just go put him in the car. Let him shake some keys. Yeah. Sorry, you have to leave. Hey, let's not start sectarian violence in here. All right?
Where's Cameron too? It's okay, we got it in the last show. We don't. <laughs>